Hi guys, this is Dr. Sadashivam once again with you. In this video, we are going to talk about the importance of water. Now looking at this topic, you might think that it's such a common topic. We all know the importance of water. Why is a video required for this? Right. Let me tell you my own experience. That reminds me of one of the uh, essays during my school uh, days, Sir C. V. Raman, Elixir of Life. I remember having gone through this essay during my school and college days, but when I went through that, it was only for the purposes of getting through the examination, passing the examination with flying colors and getting your degree. But then recently, I saw a WhatsApp message in which a Maulvi, a Maulana was talking about the importance of water. He was crediting the whole thing of nature to Allah. I was so inspired by that particular uh, video and he was talking about lots and lots of analogies uh, cited by that Maulvi and they were so interesting, right? Very interesting analogies. I don't know the name of that uh, Maulvi, but whoever is it, my salutes to him and I was greatly inspired by his examples. We all know the importance of water, but knowing is not everything because everything, when you go through certain posts, certain videos, you get so inspired, you get so sensitized by that particular uh, video. And that's the whole background of this video. But before I start, I would like to give you examples of certain Vedic scriptures written more than 5,000 years back. We don't know the time period and we are going to talk about Tritarya Aranyaka. One of the texts in, uh, Rig, uh, you know, Yajur Veda, we don't know the time, must be somewhere uh, around 6,000 years back, where it talks about the importance of water. And the Sanskrit shloka goes like this. Om Yopam Pushpam Veda Pushpavan Prajavaan Pachuman Bhavati Chandra Bhava Avam Pushpam Pushpavan Prajavaan Pashuman Bhavati Yevam Veda Yopam Hayatanam Veda Hayatanaman Bhavati Yapnirva Mapam Hayatanam Hayatanaman Bhavati Yo Ogne Rayatanam Veda Hayatanaman Bhavati Apo Vai Hayatanam Ayatanavan Bhavati Evam Veda Yopam Hayatanam Veda Ayatanavan Bhavati Listen to this, it is my own rendition. These verses are from the Tritiya Aranyaka of the Yajur Veda. Now let's look at the meaning of these beautiful verses. The verses say, that he who knows the flower of waters, he who becomes endowed with the flower, people and the animals. Look at this Pushpavan, Prajavaan, Pashuman, Bhavati. Pushpavan, flowers. Prajavaan, people. Pashuman, animals. Pashu, cow. So he who knows the flower of waters, he who becomes endowed with the flower people and the animals and then moon is the flower of waters. Chandramava apam pushpam. Moon is the flower of waters and he who knows this becomes endowed with flower, progeny and animals. He who knows the support of water becomes Endowed with that support. Yopam Ayatanam Veda Ayatanavan Bhavati. What a beautiful Sanskrit shloka it is. We are talking of climate change. We are talking about preservation of water now. But these things have been discussed 6,000 years back in our Vedas, guys. I learned this shloka some 40, 45 years back. I didn't even know the meaning of this. Shloka, we just chanted it, recited it, memorized it. And today I'm going to put all these things together. Something that was told by the Maulvi, something that was explained by Sir C. V. Raman in his essay, Elixir of Life. And something that we always keep seeing in your WhatsApp message, talking about the importance of water and then political speeches. 
Greta Thunberg talk, talking about it, political leaders talking about it and my own experiences, my parents advice, etc, etc. And that's the origin of this video. I am sure all of you will like it. Water is the elixir of life. Look at this beauty of this creation. Look at its connection with all the life forms in general and individuals in particular. The whole universe survives one and only because of water. Because the link of life in this universe is only through water. And the source of water is only one. That is the rain. Now let's look at how much is the need for water in this body. We have all studied in school that more than 70% of our body weight is water. Whether it is blood, whether it is flesh, whatever. Water constitutes more than 70% of our body mass. Depletion of water, even for a minuscule percentage, leads to a great level of discomfort. And it runs across all ages, whether it is a 70-year-old septuagenarian or whether it is a 3 or 4 months baby. Water is extremely important. The moment somebody gets dehydrated, we feel that discomfort. Kids start crying. The kid hasn't still learnt the language, but it shows its discomfort through crying because it is dehydrated, because water content is down. And therefore, the water is required to maintain this balance. Right amount of water, we mean. Now, the nature provides water. The requirement, the nature provides this water to each and every life form in this earth. When we talk about this life form, we are going to talk about the most important, which is the human life. 7 billion people, 7.5 7 billion people living as on date in this universe as we are speaking. Nature has to provide requirement, water requirement to each one of them. Irrespective of your deeds, good man, bad man, your antecedents in life, your line of faith, your allegiance towards a certain religion or belief, your ideologies, be it political ideologies or uh, uh, any other uh, ideology. And it's not just the human beings that the nature is providing water to. All the animals in this planet, all the birds, all the plants, all the trees, infinite light forms, right? Infinite light forms. Now look at this equation from an economic parlance, right? From an economic perspective. I'm going to talk about the supply side economics, demand side economics, right? I'm an economist by profession and I will try to bring in economics wherever possible, right? Now, let us talk about how much is the likely demand for water to cater to 7 billion human beings, guys. And the infinite number of uh, human life forms. We have talked about maybe 70 billion animals, 700 billion birds, an infinite number of life forms we are going to talk about. That is the demand side of the equation, water that is required. Right on a daily basis we are talking about. Now look at the supply side, economics. There shouldn't be any mismatch between the supply and the demand. Why? Because this is a crucial area. It's a matter of life and death. The requirements have to be met every day. The supply side has to match the demand, demand for this world to survive on a daily basis, daily. It is not a semiconductor shortage, right? It happened in the recent past that disrupts your entire automotive production. We have talked a lot about that in the other videos. Do watch them too. We have the supply side disruptions because of Corona, the container movements, they've all suffered the steel super cycle, steel shortage, etc. So this is not some kind of a supply mismatch or a, a semiconductor shortage that you can postpone your production of automobiles or uh, electronics for a finite period of time, two months, three months, right? And then cater to the latent demand. This water requirement needs to be met on a daily basis for people, human beings, life to survive. This is irreplaceable. This is not substitutable. This is not a substitutable community, a commodity at all. The daily demand needs to be met on a daily basis. 
in order for this universe to survive that's what we are talking about